session for various reasons. Um, interesting topic. Um, final topic in, 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 our, in our module deals with something that I think not many of us are very good at. Um, any indication, um, um, Marley Minka Page, uh, how well do you deal with confrontation? Well, sir, I avoid it as far as possible. Okay, so you, you would be, if you're a business owner, you would prefer to rather do the, um, to, to rather even before this, the, 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 the customer asks you, um, you're going to rather just over deliver. So you want to avoid the possibility of them finding something at fault and complaining about it. Okay. Um, majority, I mean, I, I might be, I might be different. Um, Paige, how do you deal with um, confrontation? You cool with it or are you like money? And I think like um, many of us, um, much rather would avoid it if we can. Um, so I, I either get incredibly defensive and angry or yeah. I cry and like <laughs> hide. <laughs> um, either which way, yes. Unfortunately, the problem is not going to disappear, and I think that's the, that's a common mistake that uh, that many of us make. Um, is this is that we um, that we because we would prefer to rather avoid it, um, and I think we become very defensive. Yes, Paige, if um, especially if the claims are um, um, are not um, legit. Um, I, on the other hand, have said to um, uh, often when I was lecturing at Varsity in Stellenbosch, um, and I, I coached a bit of cricket as well, and very often um, the, the immediate sort of reaction from somebody who knows that they have done something wrong, um, but um, is very expressive about the, the opposite, is actually because they, they go into the defensive mode, which is the defensive mode of attacking and, and, and um, no, 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 I didn't say that, whatever. So it, it, that's usually to me, that's almost um, very often, it's an it's a indication that the opposite is true. If I ask somebody that you do that, and they immediately very aggressively, no, no, of course I did it. I mean, I did it last week, didn't you get it? Um, that sort of makes me doubt if it actually, but somebody who says, um, no, um, I did it, um, I saw that, and I did it immediately. Um, so it's, again, the tone of voice in which we react that makes... Um, um, sort of the typical human first reaction to uh, confrontation is to, to defend. Um, and often with, defend, with that defensive approach, um, we try and um, place the blame on somebody else. Hmm? I can remember that's, that's it's human nature, people. It's human nature. I can remember I was, I was in primary school we went in Clarksville in the Northwest. Not too many kids in the um, um, not too many uh, kids in the um, area that um, um, there were, I think there were about ten houses in the street. It was a very new development, and um, however, the majority of those who were there were of um, the same age as me, um, and some of us have stayed friends till now, believe it or not. But we were always in trouble because it was before television and we were creative and uh, obviously um, very often in trouble because um, you just, um, you're, you're a young child, you experiment, you try things. Um, sometimes you hurt yourself, sometimes you hurt other people. Uh, and I can remember the last time my dad gave me a good hiding was because I um, denied that I did it and blamed somebody else. And he said to me, when the truth came out, he said to me, you know what, I'm actually going, you're going to get another hiding because, I mean, it's worse than um, blaming somebody else and not standing up and taking your punishment um, and admitting that you've made a mistake. But I think that is the, the, that's the nature of, um, uh, the, that's human nature. Um, it's also um, sort of uh, part of what Chapter 14 is about because we know our main objective, if we've forgotten about it, our main objective um, as service providers, and um, regardless if you're providing a service or if you're selling a product, what do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? We want to satisfy our customers' needs. I'm not going to buy something um, if I don't need it. 
if I ever I have a need uh, and my need is not satisfied, that results in me being dissatisfied because the problem hasn't gone away. So although our intention um, is, is always to uh, satisfy a customer's need and through the service delivery process, do it in such a manner, um, high quality, that our customers are so happy with us that they um, eventually become loyal um, customers. We've dealt with this throughout the course from, from the first chapter. But however, everything is, is not um, always um, sunshine uh, and beautiful roses. Um, it, it, life is not, um, reality is much different to this because we know that we are going to get complaints. We are going to get customers who are not satisfied. There are many reasons for their dissatisfaction. We'll unbundle that in this chapter. Uh, and very often it could be because the expectations were just too high. Um, what they were expecting um, was not what we could ever deliver, regardless how, um, high, um, how high the quality of service is that we offer. Um, so it's very um, often it is an um, um, unrealistic expectation on the customer side, but um, that's not necessarily always the case. Very often, because of the involvement of the human element, our employees, um, us ourselves as service providers, um, we we make mistakes. I can remember at least two mistakes I've made this morning already. One I've resolved, the other one um, I can only attend to after the, after this class, when I have off period. Um, it happens. Uh, did I mean to make the mistake? No. Um, it's when you actually, um, when when these mistakes become deliberate, um, that, we, that we find it difficult to resolve them. However, the bottom line is, in this particular um, chapter, uh, hit it as a service recovery, um, it is to expose ourselves to different ways in how we can resolve um, confrontation, conflict, um, and, and um, mistakes that we've made that resulted in customers complaining about the service that we offered. Um, and unfortunately, yes, um, and I've learned it very early on in my life. I mean, if we do not attend to it immediately, it's not going to go away. Um, it can actually just escalate and become much worse if it's not dealt with correctly. So part of what we'll do today is just a general discussion in why people complain and sometimes why customers, even if they did not receive the service that they want, do not complain. Is it, is it is some people just in that nature of, you know, and I'm not a complaining type because, I mean, uh, it's much easier to complain than it is to actually compliment somebody. That I found as well. We'll see if it's later on um, um, during the slideshow today um, that actually supports, um, supports that um, opinion. Right. Let's start off with, um, before we actually uh, start with the, the formal procedures. Um, any of you, um, or each of you, give me an example where you have been in a conflict with a service provider um, or somebody that you bought a product from that didn't work or that you were unhappy with recently. I just want to use that and start as a, and then we build on that process before we continue with a with a formal um, structure of the curriculum. Anybody who wants to go first? Um, you used a particular service, it could be your hairdresser, you could have gone to a doctor, it could be a holiday you were in, it could be airline, it could be a, a Vodacom, it could be any situation where you, or a product that you bought that, um, that you were unhappy with and that you complained about, um, or if something happened that you were not very satisfied with, but you did not complain, let's unbundle that and try and find out why you didn't complain. Um, and then um, also, if you did complain, how, um, what was the procedure you followed and, and, um, and what was the result? Were your complaint dealt with or are you still busy with that battle? <laughs> anybody, anybody who goes first or wants to go first? Um, so I want 
ordered an iPhone from, I think, Telcom, like a, a type of iPhone, like a yes. specific one. And it like arrived, but it was the wrong version. Mm -hmm. So I ordered and then I went back and was like, yo, I didn't order this one. I ordered the other one. And they were like, oh, sorry, we don't have stock. This is all we had. <laughs> and then I kind of just left it because I didn't feel like that negativity in my life. <laughs> Yeah, you might try. I mean, if if they were the, if they had monopoly, you you wouldn't have a choice. You had to get the phone at some point, so you probably have to bear with it. Yeah. But there are alternatives, um, and and therefore you just yeah. A lot of people do that. A lot of customers actually find them. All, um, and, and those are the those are the silent landmines that we're not aware of because. Um, I would much rather, I've told you before as well, I mean, uh, to me, a, a complaining customer is, A, yes, symptomatic of a problem that we have and that we have to fix, but um, also um, it's, to me, an opportunity to see what I'm doing wrong. If I'm just doing, if nobody tells me you're doing it wrong, I, I'm continuing to doing it in the way I, I do because nobody's complaining. Um, and I think we get ourselves in that mode. And then when we do find ourselves in a position where, you know, ugh, it's almost, it, it's too much trouble to really to, to, to complain and make a scene out of this. Some, some, to pick your fights, basically, so to speak, because sometimes you just know, regardless of what I try, that um, this battle is going to, I'm, I'm going to, it's probably going to be resolved. I'm going to walk out of there and I'm going to probably get my phone in, in two or three weeks time. But you know, what? it's almost a trouble of going through that whole um, exercise that um, you want to avoid it and you'd much rather just, yeah, okay, right, thank you very much. Um, but those, as I said, um, as a service provider, those are the customers that, that worry me because they keep quiet, they don't complain, and they don't tell me what I did wrong. Uh, and for that reason, I will continue to deliver the poor service that I do because no, I, I, thought, I think I'm doing okay because nobody's telling me the, the opposite. Yeah, so since that incident, I've I've never gone through Telcom to get my I've I've always gone to the iStore store now. There you go. I mean, and and, and I, they won't even if you walk in now um, to, to 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 the Telcom store, and you would say, "Listen, I was here two weeks ago. I remember, and, and this and this, and um, and you didn't have." Um, they wouldn't even recognize you. Why? Because they think they're still doing fine. They think they are still okay and nothing is wrong because nobody's told them that they've um, that they have a problem. Um, but I think I, I can clearly remember that's way before your time. But you've probably seen the movie um, um, Pretty Woman, Richard Gere, um, and um, almost said Sandra Bullock, but it's not. It's um, um, oh, come on, people, help me now. Um, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts, of course. Man, yes. Where's my mind on a Monday morning? Um, where she was actually um, his escort, um, and he bought her basically for the week. Um, and and uh, she so obviously was dressing according to her profession. And um, as um, as a lady of the nights, and um, he took her shopping the one day, and she went into these shops. He, he didn't go with him. He just gave her a credit card, and she went, went to the shop, and um, they didn't want to help her because she, um, they, they judged her based on how um, she walked and behaved and what she wore and um, it was it was clear that that she actually in their opinion does not belong there not realizing that she has an unlimited um, um, credit card that she can't use and then she went to another shop um, and they actually assisted her with his assistance and um, um, she went back to that other shop and said listen hang on see I've spent a couple of thousands on rands which could have been spent on you and you can earn commission on that if you actually um, if you did not judge me um, and um, and offer me the um, um, the service that I probably not deserve, but the probably um, that 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 I expected. But anyway, um, typical example of of where people um, yeah have, have learned a very valuable lesson, but um, it was too late. Um, people, this this chapter, as I said, dealt, deals with uh, um, with how we as service providers react. Um, to um, to complaints because we know uh, and we've determined um, thus far already this morning that we don't take kindly to that. We don't like change. We uh, prefer to avoid confrontation. Um, but then you are going to get people who um, will find a way uh, and will find a reason to complain. You always have them too. Uh, and dealing with them um, correctly can either 
uh, and how you deal with them um, is going to affect your business directly, um, your future business. Um, and But we'll have a look at that um, during our formal structures today. Um, if a business um, have a if a business have a the correct philosophy um, towards their customers, a service provider have the correct philosophy towards your customers. It would be a customer centered um, philosophy where we are trying not just to satisfy the customer's need, but we also try and make their whole experience as pleasurable as possible. Then. Um, and we're doing that for only one reason, not to make another sale, not so we can have greater profit. Yes, those are the benefits of it, um, um, uh, but because it's the right thing to do. Because if I was the consumer, if I was on the other end of this particular uh, scenario, uh, the person receiving the service, how would I have been, pre how would I be preferred to be have treated? And that, I think, is what we sometimes lack. And that's why we um, create opportunities that we have to, um, that, that leads to complaints and that we have to then address. Um, so again, if you know that, you, um, that you're not good in, in, in dealing with complaints, because it's, it's a, it brings a negativity to the room and you're not, you don't thrive on it. Very few of us thrive on, on, on um, on negativity, we would much rather prefer to be rewarded than reprimanded. Um, is is that um, we we tend to we tend to repeat that um, that good behaviour, but similarly we also do that if we um, if we don't um, deliver a high quality service um, to satisfy the customer. Unfortunately, many organizations fail to implement that marketing concept because they forget about the four P's um, that, um, um, around which the marketing concept um, um, revolves. Right. Um, and with the manner in which we address a particular complaint, we can actually exceed what initially was expected by the customer, because most customers, and we'll see that later, there's a model that has been designed to, to measure that. When a customer um, has a bad experience and they're dissatisfied with the service that was provided, and they decide to complain and not keep quiet, and move on. When they do complain, the manner in which you address that complaint can, can result in such a positive experience that they um, um, that they it results in such a positive experience that they completely um, it takes them by surprise, but it exceeds even the initial expectation um, of what um, what is probably going to um, what is probably part of the service um, that that they have obtained. Um, it, it it can have the negative. It often, if it's treated incorrectly, if the if the complaint is dealt with incorrectly, it has a, a snowball effect, a negative snowball effect, where it just becomes worse. Um, but it can actually have the opposite effect as well. Remember, a snowball is round. It, it rolls up. It can't roll uphill. It rolls downhill, and it gathers a lot of um, snow along the way as well. So a problem um, that you not, have not dealt with can actually run away with you too. But the reverse is true as well. It could also be, um, it could also be have a positive um, a snowball effect that results in great word of mouth um, a loyal um, um, customer where they would have just been a normal customer in the past. So sometimes the, the, the complaint is not a bad thing. It's the manner in which you um, deal with it that, uh, that is, leaves a lasting, um, at least a lasting impression with, with the customer. I can remember when I did my first comrades in 1997, um, I bought two pairs of shoes, one to train with and one to run in. Um, the training pair, 
um, I use on a daily basis. You're doing about 10, 15 kilometers a day in your preparation. Um, and the racing pair was just to, to run half marathons and marathons and the race itself. So obviously the racing pair would have much fewer kilometers um, um, on the shoes. On, um, and on average, they say a good pair of shoes should last you for about 1,500 kilometers. It's like, a, it's like a, the wheels, um, the tires of a vehicle. Um, my racing pair had about a quarter of the miles on them when I finished the comrades, but um, they were in bad shape. Part of the sole came loose. There was some stitching that, um, that was loose on the side. So I went back and I said, them, listen, look at these two shoes. I bought, can you remember I bought these pairs of shoes here? Oh, yeah, no, we can still remember you, sir. I said, well, what's the difference between these two? And you know what? I've used these every single day except for my races, and I've used the other one just for races. The one I've just used for races has a quarter of the mileage on that the other has, and, and it was like, they knew what I wanted. Um, I wanted the, the, one of the pairs of shoes replaced because it shouldn't be like that. If it's the same pair bought, bought on the same day and one was used more than the other, it should be in, in, in a better condition and not in a worse condition than the others that has been used regularly. Um, I eventually, look at a long story short, my problem was resolved. I did, did get an extra pair of shoes. Uh, I'm not going to disclose the shop or the brand of shoes. Um, but it was the manner in which it was done. I was almost like, um, uh, um, I felt like the victim. I think, you know what? It, I always got, almost got the impression that they were like, what do you expect, sir? The commerce is 90 kilometers. I mean, the, the shoes, no. It's about the num amount of um, hours and time and kilometers spent in a shoe. If I use the same one, for, um, if two people, walk to the, uh, buy the same pair of shoes and the one uses it less than the other, the one that used it less should be in a better condition and mine wasn't. That's the argument. But they made me, f they, they made me feel like, um, yeah, like, what do you expect, sir? Um, and it didn't go down well. I have also not gone back to that shop um, or have I um, continued to support that particular brand of shoe? And it's sad because there was nothing wrong with the shoe. I quite enjoyed the shoe. It was actually um, one of the better shoes that I've ever had. But um, can you see the snowball effect that, um, that, that um, the bad um, handling of my complaint resulted in me not just not supporting that supplier anymore, but also not supporting a particular product. Um, and that's not the only brand that they stop. So it's, it's, it's sometimes, yeah. We, um, it sometimes can have a much worse effect, but again, the opposite is also true. It can have an amazing um, effect on, on the customer if it's dealt with correctly. Not all our customers were unhappy, as we have um, established thus far, as um, do actually complain. Um, we are, there are different, um, there are different types of um, uh, service failures that result in, com or can result in complaints. Um, malfunctioning refers to specifically um, equipment that was used by the service provider that did not work, um, might even have be dangerous to use. Um, that, that's probably one of the most serious um, um, concerns for a service provider because it, it can result in injury. And um, we know when injury, um, when, when people are injured, they they're definitely not going to for, uh, forget to complain. They are um, because they could have experienced pain, um, and, and, and as a result of that, they don't leave it. They do complain, but they sometimes then people also say, you know what, it could be something that you saw on television, one of those very mark um, items that you then went to and, and, and bought from the very mark store, um, and it, it malfunctioned. And you almost like, you know, I sort of expected it to not work because. Um, because um, if it was a really quality product, it probably wouldn't have um, gone through the very mark marketing channels. It probably would have been directly from the manufacturer. Um, so sometimes, yes, um, people complain about things that can endanger them or can hurt them. Um, and it's 
it's probably not um, a product that you have bought that malfunctions is is probably not uh, going to escape um, a customer not complaining um, because if I bought a kettle and the kettle doesn't work, there's no use to have a dysfunctional or malfunctioning or not functioning kettle in my kit in, in, in my kitchen. I'm going to go back to the shop and I want to I want another one. So malfunctioning very um, in most cases, if not all cases, result in a complaint. Um, incorrectness, incorrectness maybe of information that was provided. Um, and that's very important because if your employees are not properly trained and skilled in how to use a particular um, um, item correctly, um, and you know what, that, um, that information, um, that it refers to the T's and C's in the small print. So not, how many people do actually read that small print? Who of you? Are you in the habit of reading the small print um, and the, the T's and C's, terms and conditions? Um, if you buy, if you go to the shop and you've been to the doctor um, because you had, um, you were suffering from, from hay fever um, and you weren't sure, but you, was, you, were diagnosed of, um, you were diagnosed with that condition after you've been to the doctor. Doctor gave you a script, you took it to the pharmacy and the pharmacy gave you a, a product. Um, it's often in a, in a box, if it's a, a nasal spray or something. Um, how, how many of us do read that pamphlet that comes inside? That says the, um, the contraindications. You can experience if you use this. Um, it, it can lead to drowsiness and stuff like that. Who, if it's not on the outside of the box, do we, how many of you actually read the outside of the box? I do, sir, but only the outside. Only the outside, exactly. But uh, they, they can't publish everything on the outside. That's why they have the little pamphlet inside. And that's the little pamphlet inside actually tells you more. That's the, the scary stuff is on that small little pamphlet inside the box. And I think we, we do that um, because it's almost too much trouble. And we do that because, you know what? The doctor studied for seven, eight years. I trust him because he's a professional. I trust the pharmacist that is a professional. You know what? They they only know so much as well. It might be an underlining condition that um, that that they did not pick up, um, but you might have if you read through um, read through all that information. Um, I was also never in the habit of of doing that. Um, and and to be honest with you. Um, I read what's on the box or what's on the container <laughs> and I follow the instructions that the doctor and the pharmacist have put on the box to say take three times a day after meals kind of that, those are, that's where that's what the majority of us do and that's what I did as well and then earlier this year when um, when I went through my operations um, it's not just one box or one capsule or one container it, it was I mean it was heaps and heaps of medication and to be honest, I had the time as well because um, you can't go anywhere if you if you um, have just been stitched up and there's tubes sticking out of you. So I had the time and I made a conscious effort of reading these things. And then I realized, you know what? Um, it's such a difficult task to actually get it right all the time. I had to have so much respect for, for pharmacists and doctors um, as a result of that because they can get it, there's, there's so many small subtleties that can go wrong and, and, and the result could be disastrous. Um, I suppose that's what they study and, and but but sometimes we have to realize that they, they can also, um, small little human errors can creep in. But from then on, I've made a conscious effort of reading um, the fine print, so to speak, everything, because it's usually in there somewhere when you are complaining, where people refer to you and say, sir, did, did you actually read this? Um, online, when you're doing a um, declaration, have you read it? Okay, have you accept, accept if once you've clicked on accept, you can't complain about things that's in there that you haven't read, and that's why you have to read it, but um, we don't always do that. Um, that 
correctness or incorrectness of the information provided to the customer um, is what um, adds to the um, that, that adds fuel to the fire and that leads to complaints because the expectation when we booked this um, room for the weekend in a, a five-star hotel was that we're going to get top-class treatment and service. We did not want to hear, um, find out when we have booked in already and paid our deposit that there are exclusions um, and you've got to pay extra for this. And if you use anything from the bar fridge, they'll charge your room with it. Um, and so there's, if there's no proper correct information shared with the customer um, at the start, it very often leads to, um, to complaints. Unavailability, Paige, you gave us a good example of that. Oh, sorry, so we do not have any in stock at the moment. Well, you know what? Um, that's me out of here. Um, I'm not even going to, I'm definitely not, I admit. I'm, I'm like Paige in that, um, in that instance. Um, I, I would not, if they don't have stock, I will just move on to the next shop. Um, lateness, in other words, I complained about something and um, lateness and slowness in which the problem is dealt with goes hand in hand. Sometimes the problem is resolved, but at that point almost where I've almost forgotten about my problem. Um, and, the, and then the, the, the solution and um, to the complaint, um, the resolve, resolvement of the issue comes too late for me to actually, uh, I've already made up my mind. I already have a negative attitude towards a particular service provider. So even if I did receive um, what I complained about, um, it almost happened too late. How people, the slowness in how people react to the complaint, also very, very, um, um, very important. Um, if a service is provided um, in a certain manner within a certain time frame and it doesn't happen in that particular time frame, people are going to complain about it. Um, staff, that's uncaring, that's impolite. Um, that's like, I mean, hello, we're going to clean the room and then it says 10 o'clock, you must be out of the room so we can clean it. Yeah, okay, right. So if I have a do not disturb sign on the, on the door and I decided to lie in today and, and not go out and be a tourist, um, so many... The, recept, the, the first person in, in a hotel environment, an hospitality environment, is the most important person. Uh, although they might not feel like it every day, they must bring their A-game and they must be friendly and, and sometimes overly friendly. Um, but um, when somebody complains and the, your tone of voice um, will display if you're really listening to them, if you, are, if you care about um, the issue and the situation and want to resolve it, um, the, the fact that you um, interrupt them all the time, um, that impoliteness, um, or the exact opposite, complete um, unresponsiveness. Um, you, you're just listening, but you're continuing with your work as, as if the person is not in front of you complaining and throwing his torch and jumping up and down. Um, and it often happens because your staff is not knowledgeable enough. Um, if you do not know, how uh, to, um, if you do not have the, um, if you're not empowered, we'll see that later on in the chapter, or if you're not empowered by your um, employee to uh, be able to resolve the issue, um, you find yourself in a difficult position because you do not have the knowledge to really um, resolve the complaint. Um, you, you hear what the customer is saying and you can see that they're unhappy, but you don't know how to fix it because you don't have the knowledge to fix it. Um, or if the complaint is legit because you're just not knowledgeable enough. So it is very important, um, and these are very commonly, and we've all, from what we've now um, um, witnessed, we've all we've we've all had experiences like this at some point. Most often, I think um, my greatest challenges have always been um, in situations that has led to me complaining um, to a service provider was the fact that. Okay, right. So, so this happened now, but they are just not bothered to resolve it as quickly as possible. This is one of those things. Yeah, okay, right. It's we we we, we notice your problem. We uh, we take um um we take notice of your problem. We resolve the problem. But um, there are other things that's more important. That's the sort of impression that you, as the customer, can get. 
because they 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 are so slow in dealing with the problem that you think oh, you know what even they don't either they don't care um, but either which way um, the speed in which a, a complaint is dealt with um, is very very important you can even get to your um, you can even resolve the issue incorrectly with the first attempt but the fact that it was attempted immediately uh, is, is is very important to to, to customers. Right. How we deal with um, with complaints must be actually should be part of um, any service organization's quality management strategy. Um, there are ways to deal with it. The effective service recovery leads to enhanced perceptions of the quality of the product. Um, even if you had a even if the product involved is is um, it was not delivered to the satisfaction of the customer, the fact that the quality in which we deal with the complaint um, again then enhances the fact that you know what this is a quality product, but is a quality service. This was just a hiccup. Um, it's not going to happen again. Um, but um, the competence um, of the organisation. Um, to resolve the issue um, is very often that lead is very often what leads to um, how the um, quality is perceived by the customer. If they expect not, if if they expect their complaint not to be taken seriously and resolved, um, it's going to it's definitely going to impact on their perception of the quality, not just of the service, um, but um, or the aspect or issue that they complain that they are complaining about. But with the entire service provider in any other services that they offer, that you not have not used yet. So it's it it, it spills off um, in, uh, into your perception on, on the company as a whole. Uh, although you might have just had one little issue with them on in one specific section, um, let's say for instance you go to a restaurant, um, there was just one small little um, um, issue with with your food, but the rest of the evening was fantastic. The service was brilliant. Um, the the ambiance, the whole, um, it was it was a very good experience. There's one little issue that makes us complain, um, but because it wasn't dealt with in a in a in a correct manner. In a correct, swift um, manner. Um, now, all the other things that were that were done correctly and were done right, and to the satisfaction of the customer, now also becomes um, because becomes negative um, because the, the, the evaluation on the quality is now done on the entire um, service provider and not just the element that they've been that been wrong. Right. It's a very complicated looking um, figure on page 351. Um, let me just get to my textbook and I'll share that with you. But it actually is quite simple. And I think once you start reading from the top, um, this is one of those, this is one of those um, figures, diagrams that if you look at it the first time, you think, oh my goodness, I'm not sure where it starts and where it ends. If you ever go through it um, and you start right from the top, um, you'll see that it's just um, it's it's just in a di diagrammatic format the process that we go through um, when we experience a service um, and if the experience is a dissatisfaction one way the what we um, what what we expected um, is is obviously less than what the actual performance was. Um, then it will lead to our dissatisfaction, and there are different ways in which we can deal with our dissatisfaction. We'll see that in the middle of, of page 351, um, where we switch brands. Um, that's where we decide because we're dissatisfied. Um, like Paige has said, then I just go to somebody else. So you immediately switch to a different brand, or you switch to a different service provider, um, or you stay there, and you voice your complaint. Um, that's an option. Um, 
So we're halfway through that through that diagram already, and then obviously the result on either way. If if it stops there and you've moved to a different service, if you decided to exit at this point by not supporting the service provider anymore, that's the end of this particular diagram. But if you do complain, um, then how was your how was your um, complaint dealt with? Um, the acknowledgement of the complaint, the willingness to 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 um, to to resolve it. Um, or the fact that they're denying um, um, that they're going to a denial mode and actually not doing anything about the problem, which will lead to your dissatisfaction, will continue dissatisfaction, and then eventually resulting in a negative attitude towards the service provider, which results in them losing a customer. Um, and um, yeah, you might even get bad mouth um, uh, based on the experience that the customer had. To, it results in negative publicity, but it could actually have the exact opposite as well. It could have the fa um, um, a positive outcome where there's acknowledgement uh, for the problem um, that you complained about and that they are willing to resolve it, that there are certain ways in how it's being resolved, uh, the what, who, and how quickly, um, which will result in your satisfaction with um, based on um, what you expected the outcome would be and what it actually was. Because many people expect, um, based on the perception that they have at that point, because something went wrong and we complain about it, what's the chances that something will go right when we um, want the complaint to be fixed? Um, so yeah, it's it, it's because they have committed themselves to resolving the issue. Um, it has a positive outcome. Um, you, as a customer, have um, um, have a positive attitude towards all. Your attitude towards the, the company remains positive. You remain loyal to them, um, and you will um, obviously um, share good um, word of mouth with um, with your friends and people in your peer group. So basically, if you look at um, the figure, which seems extremely um, complicated at first glance, if you just follow the, 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 the blocks that are in, in darker colored, you'll see that those are the ones that lead you towards um, a positive um, um, resolving, a positive re result um, in fixing the complaint that you have lodged. Where if it's dealt with incorrectly, we go with the white blocks and that result in you being negative and leaving that service provider or uh, and even um, um, bad mouthing them and and resulting in in negative publicity for them. Right, so it's not that complicated that um, figure. It actually is is a nice exercise to go through. Um, but this is the process that you go through as a customer when um, complaints happen. When a customer um, complains about poor service, the service provider can deny any wrongdoing and ignore um, the customer. Yes, we know that. Uh, it's a possibility. The alternative is to actually acknowledge the service failure and decide on the following. What should we do to resolve it? Who should execute um, the process? Who should actually address the problem? How quickly should it be done? Those are the three things that a customer wants to know. Who's going to help me? What are you going to do? How quickly is it going to happen? Can any of you relate to this? Have you had a complaint that you thought, oh my word, it's almost, I'm, 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 I'm reluctant to complain because I'm pretty sure it's going to result in nothing. Um, anybody of you had such an experience and then exactly blown up the water, it was the opposite experience? You don't seem like a group that complained that much, hey? Maybe it's as a result of um, the fact that you are um, confrontation avoiders. You know what, that's scary. At some point, uh, one day I know that um, <laughs> you, one of you might snap um, and um, yeah. Lo and behold, uh, the recipient, um, whoever the service provider is, um, at that point, we sometimes people it it's sometimes good 
going to get rid of our negativity as well. If something negative has happened, um, you know what, we, for us to, to convert that into a positive experience, um, we must take charge of it. And one of the a starting point is to get it off our chest and say, you know what, this was not on. I'm not happy. Um, without being demanding, I think that's the one thing. Most most customers also um, um, uh, become too demanding and um, in, in um, demanding a, um, 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 the problem to be resolved um, in in an unexpectedly um, 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 fast time, and that that just adds to the um, to the negative experience. Why customers do not complain? I think we've identified some of these already. I think fear of victimization right at the bottom is, is probably one. Embarrassment, maybe I made a mistake and I didn't realize I made a mistake and that's why um, something went wrong and I'm complaining and I'm walking up there and I look like the fool. Or they make you, um, um, they, they make you feel like um, it was your fault. Um, Sometimes people just believe it's not worth the time and the effort. And, and to be honest with you, um, I, I would say especially because of the um, um, characteristics of, of, of Gen Zs and Millennials, um, they they want quick fixes. They want the problem resolved quickly. And sometimes it's 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 unrealistic to expect that. Um, and that um, that just adds that just adds to the challenge um, of of um, of resolving it correctly, and and sometimes customers just don't, yeah, they don't bother because I mean, they don't have the time to complain about it. Um, they also believe it may, um, it, it will not make a difference if they complain. It's probably not going to go away because they don't believe that anything will be done about the problem to resolve the issue that you complained about. Um, furthermore, people believe that it's, um, no one is interested. That's a that's a common perception. Nobody's interested, you know what? Yeah, whatever. Um, and they also do um, not know how to complain. In other words, what what do I do? I now have a problem. This um, service does not work. What's the procedure? What's the steps I have to follow? Um, who do I speak to about this? And then that 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 contributes towards the frustration of. Um, um, of, of how the complaint is, is dealt with. And because of that, customers sometimes just don't go through the trouble of doing it and then they don't complain. Right. The nature of service recovery. Service recovery, remember, is how we deal with complaints. Service recovery can be defined if we have to now put it into um, in, into specific words, the thought out plan process for returning aggrieved customers to a state of satisfaction with the organization after a service or product has failed to live up to the expectations. It's quite simple. You use the service, something went wrong, customer complains, Service recovery refers to the process that now happens where you are going to convert that negative experience into a positive one so the customer walks out of there and the problem has been, um, has, has been resolved to their satisfaction. Service recovery therefore refers to the complaints handling system that aims to rectify problems as they occur, but also um, monitor the service delivery process in an attempt to identify the problem before they actually happen. That's the proactive and the reactive um, 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 sides to uh, to complaints. Um, we have to react to a complaint from a customer, not just to solve the problem and make the problem go away and make the customer satisfied again, but also for us to learn from that experience so we can proactively plan to avoid it in future. That's the two sides of, of complaints. And at this point, I'm going to, oh, my apologies, sneeze. 
everybody still good? Anything that you still have to complain, want to complain, can complain about today? No, thank you, sir. Nothing to complain. <laughs> or do you think I just don't care? I'm not going to resolve it, even if you do <laughs> complain. Um, no, um, I think at this point, um, we, we've progressed quite nicely through the chapter. We almost finished. I think there are 15 dimensions of potential um, um, Potential ways of how we could resolve issues um, that that um, that has been identified, and that we have to it's boxes that we have to tick to ensure that complaints or problems are dealt with correctly. Uh, time is the first thing. People want it fixed quickly. Um, people also the level of um, atonement. In other words, um, to what extent are you prepared to go? to solve their problem. Is it, you know what, sir, um, I'm just, it's fine. Um, these things happen um, here, and they replace the, uh, the product that you have complained about. Or, um, you know what, sir, I know that was um, there was a hair in your soup, so um, you don't have to pay for your meal tonight. That is a level of, that's the expected level of atonement. There can be, the, there are, additional levels where they would say you know what sir don't pay for the meal tonight i mean i'm i'm very sorry this this is this is not something that happens regularly but you know what not just i'm not going to pay for tonight's meal um here's a voucher for your next visit you don't have to pay the next visit is for free so that is an higher level of atonement so the level of atonement is the manner in which the what level you are prepared to resolve um, um, um the problem Apology, that's expected. People want an apology. That's the first thing that they want to know. So, you know what? I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Um, my, my serious apologies. How can we fix your problem? And then they want a fair fix. They want to make sure that they walk out of there and, and think that, you know what? I'm, I'm actually, I'm not worse off. Um, sometimes I might be better off, but at least um, um, my problem has been resolved and uh, whatever I complained about has been dealt with to my satisfaction. That's, they want it just to be fair. The way in which you communicate, your communication style, um, very, very important. Are you aggressive? Are you um, caring? Um, are you emphatic? Like they, um, um, have you showed the empathy that's necessary? Um, because people, when people complain, we have to sometimes put ourselves in a customer's shoes. They sometimes feel so aggrieved and so unhappy, but they also not comfortable in complaining. Um, and, and therefore, it, it sometimes took a lot of effort for them to reach that point where they say, you know what, I'm actually going to complain. I, 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 I usually don't do this, but in this case, I actually am. Um, you have to then show that empathy, that, um, that they must feel that, wow, these people must be in the business of dealing with complaints because um, the way in which um, they listen to my problem and um, were very em emphatic towards um, my situation and, and, and it, they, it was clear that they wanted to help me. Um, accept responsibility, okay? In other words, okay, right, we, so we apologized, something went wrong, it shouldn't happen, it shouldn't have happened, uh, and this is how we're going to um, Resolve it. We, we will take full responsibility and we are going to offer you a couple of options on how we can resolve it. If you have taken step number seven, you must keep your promise. Otherwise, having communicated properly, being very calm, showing a lot of empathy, um, apologizing, accepting responsibility means nothing if you do not keep your promise. Feedback, go to the customer and say, sorry, sir. I mean, um, you were here yesterday, you complained about this. Um, I told you what we're going to do. I just want to give you um, a call to say, um, this is where the problem is at the moment. And um, we are one step away from resolving it. I'm just waiting for so-and-so to get back to me and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll be able to address your concern. Just keep them informed by giving them good feedback. The perception of the commitment to service quality um, it comes from the customer. In other words, um, do the customer expect that their problem is going to be, um, to be um, resolved or not? Um, what do they perceive? Do they think it's going to be resolved? Do they think, you know what, I'm complaining, but I know nothing is really going to happen? All those aspects that we've listed on the previous page. 
um, the empowerment of the people um, working with the issue are the people that you are complaining with um, in a position of authority that allows them or that gives them um, the um, authority to resolve the problem or are they just going to refer it to somebody else? Except um, or how accessible were the person and how approachable were they when and this like um, you work in the complaints department and then um, you always when somebody comes in to complain you run away because you don't want to deal with it so you've got to be approachable um and and, and very often and um, i'm in a habit of if i see some somebody sitting somewhere unattended um regardless if i ask uh, have you been served uh, is there any problem uh, is there anything that we can help you with um, i might even not i i do that as a habit not even um, representing a particular company the tangibles in other words the the the, the the pro the thing that you complained about the product that was um that was wrong um is there is there a physical um solution uh, have you um have the product been replaced are you getting your voucher for a free meal or an extra day stay at the hotel whatever what the staff's attitude was towards oh geez no it's a, i'm very sorry to hear about your nonsense but um hey life happens if you have that attitude mm -mm. So the attitude of the people dealing with the complaint is very important. And I'm pretty sure if you deal with complaints on a regular basis, because that's your responsibility and job at a company, you sometimes get to that point of saturation where I just cannot handle another complaint. Um, unfortunately, that's part of that particular role that you play in a, in a business. And um, you'll have to, you have to deal with it because that person's complaint uh, for him or for her is as important as the previous person and that wh wh whatever the next person's complaint would be. Everything must be addressed individually based on that particular scenario. Um, and explaining, explaining to people what the process is that will follow and how we are going to resolve it. If people have clarity about how the problem is, is going to be tackled, already it puts them in a more um, um, acceptable mood of okay these people have listened to me um again explanation helps nothing if you do not number eight if you do not keep your promise none of these none of these matter okay so at this point before there's any complaints um let's rather um call it a day um and then tomorrow we'll finish the chapter um and address specific a case study um, or case studies about bad service and how it was handled and how it could and should have been handled. Um, and then on Wednesday, we'll do some uh, preparation for, for your test, um, for your exam in, um, in June, July, I think. Any questions, anybody? No, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. Thanks, um, Mali. Thanks, Minka.